Each night we cover so many important yet often heavy topics. So at the end of each week, we bring you people who are making a difference, focusing on the positive stories happening in our communities. Tonight, we want to take a moment to shine the spotlight on a medical assistant who turned over a new leaf. His name is Enrique Rodriguez. He's so happy. Um, he's better known as the singing phlebotomist because after he's done drawing blood samples on the job, he sings uplifting religious songs to critically ill patients. And that is a far cry from the life he once lived. He first joined a gang back in 2009 after his brother was sent to prison. But after gangs made two attempts on his mother's life, Rodriguez knew it was time for a change. Joining me now on the phone is that singing phlebotomist Enrique Rodriguez. He's been working at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital in New Jersey for nine years. Enrique, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your story. You got a great voice. Before we get to your singing, I want to talk about your past. This is so incredible, your story. You seem like a sweetheart. How did you get involved with gangs in the first place? Thank you guys for having me. Um, it's an honor to be here. It's a pleasure. So basically, uh, my older brother, me and him were very close. And as he had to go to jail for a while, I was I was alone. And, um, you know, a lot of the world can attest to this. When, when you're feeling alone, it's, it's one thing to struggle when you have people, but it's another thing when you struggle and you're by yourself. So in that place of, of feeling alone and isolated, I just wanted a sense of family. And one thing that gangs like to promote is it's like a brotherhood and a family in a sense. And that that's something that I was seeking. So in trying to find a family, I, I found one um, that that's what led me into that life. Uh, it wasn't anything that I, I dreamt about wanting to become or it was nothing that I thought was 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 OK. It was just it was just more so me not being alone anymore. And, and having a brotherhood and a sense of family, if that makes sense? Yeah, no, I've heard that. We, we've heard that before, and that's how these kids get swept up. Like you said, you got swept up into it. You were alone. Now, I want to hear more about what you talked about, the attempts on your mother's life. Uh, tell me about that. And, and that was your wake-up call, right? That was that was absolutely a wake up call. See, it's it's one thing if something would happen to me, I would, you know, I've done I haven't always been a good person. I've done things. So if something came back to me, you reap what you sow. But for it to reach my home and 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 first time um almost running her over with a car and the second time attempting on her life with a weapon, it's 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 it got to a point where it wasn't just about me anymore and I could just not live with myself if something happened to, to my mother, my earth, to the person who, who brought me into this world, something were to happen to her on my behalf, I just, I don't think I would, I would be able to, to handle that well. So that was definitely a wake-up call. It absolutely was a wake-up call for sure. Now we're looking at pictures of your family. You got a beautiful family. I'm, I'm just curious, how did you get out? Because we hear about these gangs and how tough it is to try to get away from that life? Well, honestly, I, I, I definitely thank God. It was definitely a miracle that I was even, that I'm even on the phone right now. I mean, I, I should not even be alive, but by God's grace, he's, he's kept me shielded and, and, and abounded. And um, on all honestly, I, I live in the same town. I, I, I see the same people here and there, but it's to the point where he's, he's protected me and he's with me. And honestly, everything just kind of split apart. You know, I went away for some, for some time after the situation happened, let everything cool down for a bit. And then I returned back and, you know, people moved away. People went this way, separate ways, you know, life continues and life goes on. And I guess people just move on in a sense. But as far as getting out as we all know there 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 is no way out and and that leads me back to the point of just God's grace and and just one very important thing on this is I didn't grow up um believing in God I grew up quite the opposite I didn't believe in God I believed in myself and my weapon however when he 
saved my mother and then tugged at my heart to say, I don't want you hurting your brothers and sisters, but in, in fact, I want you healing them through music, through love, through joy. And that's when it really struck me um, that, you know, there there is a God up there and he does care about us and he does love us and wants the best for us, even if at that moment we don't see it. <clears throat> those years that I thought I was abandoned, those years that I was in gangs, alcohol, drugs, violence, hurting people, getting hurt, I didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel, but it was, had it not been for that, I wouldn't have had the, the testimony that I have now to be able to touch the people that I'm able to touch. I'm, I'm in the hospital singing in the ICUs with patients who are, are either, you know, um, very sick and almost at their end or they're, or they're recovering and bouncing back. And even if it's just for two minutes, one song that can touch their heart and touch their soul, I think that bringing that joy and that peace and that spirit in the room with me and the fact that I change almost radically overnight, because like I said, I never believed it's, it's, it just goes to show you the goodness of God. And I just can't stress that enough that I'm here by grace. I'm not here to boast. I'm not here to say I, I have a, a, a beautiful voice. I taught myself guitar. I'm not here to, for none of that. I, actually, it was all him. It was his blessing. It was his anointing. And I would not be here had it not been for his grace and his love for me. I just wanted to, to really emphasize on that, that I didn't grow up believing. But the miracles I've seen, and, and I've seen patients wake up from comas, and I've seen healing that you just can't explain. Wait, you said you saw a medicine. patient wake up from a coma? One of the videos I posted on my TikTok and Instagram, but I had to blur the faces out because, you know, HIPAA rules, we have to protect the patients, obviously, definitely. The, I was sitting outside playing my guitar, and a mother walked up to me and said, I don't know why, but for some reason, I, 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 feel, I feel like you have to come sing to my son. He plays guitar, he's in his 20s, and, and, and he's, you know, he's, he's, he's not doing too well. I go in the room, I start strumming the guitar, I start singing. The moment I strum that guitar, the moment the name Jesus is brought up, his eyes wake up. Coincidence? Many will say so. However, me seeing the wow. miracles I've seen, wow. walking the walk I've walked. <laughs> that does sound... That, that does sound, sound like a miracle. Your whole story sounds like a miracle, Enrique. And I want to thank you so much for joining us up. tonight. And thank <laughs> you for being such a great example.